It can easily be said that we're in a time of moral crisis. Hardly a week goes by without some new scandal. A politician cheating on his wife or his taxes, a religious leader involved with prostitution, a no noted financier caught embezzling millions from his clients. On top of that, our government has taken over a major corporation, favoring one class of shareholder over another in clear violation of the law. Federal regulators are now dictating salaries at financial institutions, and our president is proposing policies that are openly designed to redistribute wealth. This is indeed a time of moral crisis. It's imperative that we understand the moral principles that we value, that shape our work and our lives. As manufacturers, we have many values in common. Most of us who are involved in manufacturing and love what we do, turning raw materials into finished products, do not even realize how our choice of vocation reflects our philosophy of life. But consider what's required to manufacture a product. You have to have a concept of the final product. You have to have an understanding of the properties of the raw material that you use. You have to know the processes that are required to turn that raw material into a product, or you have to have the ability to develop those processes. What do all these things have in common? All of them require the use of the mind. Manufacturing cannot happen without man's mind. In manufacturing, we deal with facts. A product cannot lie. It is what it is. While advertising may make false claims about a product, those claims can be tested and proved right or wrong. Therefore, manufacturing requires honesty, truth. We create value. We understand that the way to make money is to make something out of raw materials. We create wealth. We work for profits and we earn them. The general population mistakenly thinks that our profit margin is 25% or more, but we know it's actually an average of 4 to 6%. To maximize our slim profits, we have to make sure that every step in the manufacturing process adds value to the product. That's a key principle. We focus on people and processes that add value. We eliminate steps that don't add value. We don't hire or keep people who don't have the skills we need to make our products. We don't reward the worthless. It would make no sense in our manufacturing process. That leads us to three key philosophical principles. First, man must use his mind to create the tools of his existence. Second, man must be honest. Creating or adding value earns a reward. The last one has a corollary. Being worthless deserves no reward. We create products that save time and labor for everyone else on Earth. We create jobs. We create wealth. Our products, jobs, and wealth benefit everyone on Earth. For this, we are taxed, regulated, and labeled as greedy, polluting industrialists. Our factories are shunned by many municipalities. Our jobs are looked down on by teachers, and parents, young people who fail to understand the earning potential and job satisfaction of a career in manufacturing. Our elected representatives not only support, but continue to implement policies aimed at the destruction of our manufacturing base. We need to use our three key principles as the micrometer, caliper, and go-no-go -go gauge when we evaluate a politician or propose legislation. When a politician supports legislation that limits our ability to act, to run our businesses according to our own judgment, he's telling us that he does not believe in man's ability to use his mind. When legislation is proposed that taxes high earners at a greater rate and gives tax credits to the poor, an earned reward is being given to someone who has not earned it, a violation of our third principle. We can easily identify those who are working against us. It's time for this country to learn to value us, the men and women who create products, jobs, and wealth. Over decades, we've become a society that rewards need, that makes a hero of the underdog and a villain of the industrialist. The economic crisis gives us a chance to change that. We need to continue our activism in Washington, it's up to us to tell the country how proposed legislation will continue to hurt our economy or how it could help. We have to talk to our employees to make sure they also understand. They can help spread our story. Our key message to our elected representatives is fairly simple and comes from what we've learned as manufacturers. To grow the economy, reduce mandates, since mandates increase costs. Change one thing at a time. 
to avoid or evaluate unintended consequences. Business will drive growth to allow business to grow, reduce business taxes. Over the next year, political candidates will emerge as much of the population is disenchanted with anyone currently in office. We can use our philosophical tools to identify those newcomers who have the right values. We must educate them, show them what we do, and support those who understand the value we bring to the country. It's time for us to stand up and speak out, to stop accepting punishment in the form of crippling taxes and regulations for our achievement, and to make clear what we want, a free economy that allows the market to judge our efforts and reward us with the profits that we earn. How can we Through PMA membership, a lot of this becomes very easy. On the training side, as far as educating our employees, PMA has tools like an economics tape that tells our employees, you know, we really don't earn a 25% profit, here's what it really is. So there are tools on the educational side. On the activism side, which is what most of this seems to speak to, we have our One Voice group, which is a combination of PMA and NTMA. And through that, we're lobbying in Washington, holding plant tours, doing everything we can to educate not only the public, but especially our elected officials, about the things I talked about right here. We can do it. We have to get together. PMA offers us a, a way to band with other like-thinking manufacturers and take our story to Washington and to the public. We need to be heard, and we haven't been heard. This is a voice that's been too small for too long. PMA membership can really help um, magnify the voice that you have.